2 litre petrol and it's not the sort of vehicle I'd normally go for. So I started thinking how can I make this do what my, my 1.5 Corsa did, diesel. And um, I had a look at these hydrogen kits, what you can put on them, like water boost systems. This car has just been treated to this. This makes hydrogen and oxygen, which goes along this little clear tube around here and into there. And initial tests, I've got it up to basically while we're getting out of the Corsa, which is um, proving the point to me. Right on my car, it's computerised, so you've got to override the um, the ECU, the, the, like the Lambo sensors um, and the mass airflow sensors. So basically once the kit was on, two more switches fit and I have control over the mapping of the engine, meaning I can lean the fuel off. Right, there's the EFIE, there's its earth, there's its live, the red wire going through, joining the live that turns on the relay. Job's a good one. Sounds complicated and it does come across as complicated, but it's not. It's pretty simple really. And when these systems are fitted, it's it's relatively easy to maintain and keep them them gains. So this is Kazi's mass airflow wires or mass air pressure, whichever way it is, it goes to the same place. That's going in there, grey wire. And in the car. He's been shopping and he's bought this from a fancy HHO website and he's bought a scan gauge which tells him how many miles per gallon, any faults with the ECU, anything like that and uh, I think that's it. There's the display for the water boost, there's a switch for the water boost. Um, see what Cass says about it. Uh, 42 to gallon, um, average. Um, I've got a scan gauge 2 which is a little trip computer and it, it reads your average miles per gallon, your miles per gallon real time speed, your RPMs, um, your power outputs, it tells you how much fuel's in the tank, how much you've used per journey, costs, how long till the tank's empty, it gives you all the information you need to get um, precise measurements. Um, and as I say, it's proven the point, it, it absolutely works. We've turned the hydrogen off, it's reset the scan gauge, which has reset everything, everything's turned off. Now we're just driving a Mercedes on petrol. This will be a baseline. I'm going to get on the motorway, do a bit of cruising, and try different settings and show it on the camera. It's all good. I can drive it with the system switched off and I can get my readings, I can have it. I can drive it with it on the city settings, get them readings and highway settings and there is a difference, it shows it. Um, so it's absolutely proven, it's not theory, it's proven. Right, I'm both shocked and appalled. This Mercedes with no adjustment, those are the figures. We've been down the motorway, gone round and round about to the end of the motorway. We're coming back up the motorway, it's on cruise control. See the miles per gallon there, 27, 28. It looks quite impressive, but we're going downhill. That's the average, 22. I wouldn't want to be driving a two-liter Mercedes at 1.40 a liter without hydrogen. So the next test is going to be what we have in next with everything on. With everything, with everything on. But look at those figures. 21.1 miles per gallon. We use exactly a gallon there. 22.2 .2 miles, maximum revs, 0.4 hours, 57 mile per hour max, 53 mile per hour average, £4.94 cost. Oh. Wow. So that was no hydrogen, no adjusters, a lovely Mercedes, well maintained, doing its best, and it cost nearly a fiver to do 20 miles. That's actually average, 49.5, and we're currently doing 43 because we're going up a hill. We're not tailgating anyone. Don't know which way the wind's blowing.